What is up, everyone? Anthony here for another episode of the Let's Talk Resident Evil podcast. Sorry for the delay on this one. Uh, March is always a really busy month for me, from working the convention to going up to New York to uh, visit Perry. Uh, you know, it was a little hectic uh, between trying to just find time because I'm still filming uh, my short film and whatnot and working on that. So uh, it's always a balance between you know, what you have to put out and what you have to prioritize and whatnot. And I, and I put every, I try to put everything, you know, out with a hundred percent effort. Uh, so I wouldn't want to just like kind of drop it, you know, without the proper editing. This one needed a little bit more tweaking as far as audio is concerned. Uh, there's some background noise and whatnot that I had to like remove. And, um, you know, it's just the, the, the art of editing audio is always, is always fun. But thank you so much for the wait. This is the uh, long-awaited Resident Evil 2 podcast. We discuss the game in depth, and it is really fucking cool. Me and John sat down, and we talked about the game. And, you know, it's John's favorite game. It's one of my favorite games. Obviously, mine's three, but we'll get to that. Um, as, you know, the news kind of died down for RE7 and everything died down for that, you know, uh, the last episode that we put out, was last year, uh, late last year. It was like, you know, the December, I think we did a review on, uh, the DLC and we kind of closed that chapter. So it's time to just go back to what we want to talk about. And that's Resident Evil two. So me and John had a great discussion. We did this about a month ago and it's finally done the editing process. So it's going to be a good listen for you guys. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoy this one. Definitely check this out on iTunes or Lipson. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can give it a download or, you know, support us. I think, I believe we're also on Spotify. So all this stuff is readily available to you. And yeah, we're going to be putting some more stuff out, you know, hopefully shortly. Um, I'm working on a new channel artwork, like banner and everything like that. Uh, my good buddy Steve is working on that. So we're putting pieces together uh, slowly but surely. Uh, I'm going to get back into streaming as well. So, you know, we're just kind of slowly moving along. And, you know, I hope everyone enjoys this chat about Resident Evil 2. We actually did this a while ago, and we, with a completely different round of people, uh, but we had to scrap it because it did get corrupted. So now we have to <laughs> pick up the pieces and we redid it again uh, at location at John's house. Um, and this is the result. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's talk Resident Evil. to another episode of the let's talk resident evil podcast uh, we are here on location at john's house uh for a change it's actually it's probably only the second time i've recorded this outside of my house the other one being at perry's so uh yeah here we are we we're planning all day to get uh his setup he got a new tv and everything and plugged everything in so we've been hanging out but we were like well let's do the resident evil 2 podcast today because we've been trying to find time uh to do it uh with it being busy uh with our jobs with you know Super Bowl and everything like that and the, the rush of uh, hours and stuff. So we try to squeeze some time into it. Uh, the ideal thing was to get this podcast up around the anniversary, but we did our stream. That was the last thing of content you saw us do. But uh, I am, of course, here with John once again. Yo, what's up, people? And uh, this is our first thing we're doing uh, after that long and uh, tired stream, but we did it. And you guys have seemed to enjoy it in the archive and we got a lot of you know views and likes and comments and stuff like that so appreciate all that support but today we're going to be going back to uh the roots of resident evil a bit back to the original trilogy we did a origins discussion about is it six months ago a long time seven ago, eight yeah. seven eight months ago maybe um about a half a year ago a little bit more give or take we did the origins discussion kind of discussing zero and one and kind of everything that started the whole uh, Spencer mention with, of course, all the kind of older elements leading up to two, uh, with the anniversary recently passing. Um, of course, we're not we're not going to be really talking about Resident Evil Remake Two. Uh, we're not going to be really covering that as much. We're really just going to stick to 
The Origins. The Origins of Resident Evil yeah. 2, the time period in which it came out, and we're going to discuss a little bit here for an hour and a half or so. We'll see how long it takes us. But uh, let's hop back in the Wayback Machine and go back to 1997, uh, when they initially started to, you know, put this game into production after the success of Resident Evil. At that, at this point, Resident Evil was becoming a household name. Everybody knew what it was. A lot of people knew what survival horror was at the time because you had other games that were on the verge of coming out. Obviously, you had Clock Tower. You had, uh, you know, Silent Hill was on its way uh, shortly. But Resident Evil 2 is very special because, of course, this started as the 1.5, and of course that got delayed till 1998. So back then, this was the era where, you know, you'd read about these games in magazines, and this game was hyped up to the to the core. I mean, yeah. it was bigger, it was badder, it had it had a lot more wider range of, of characters and BOWs and larger enemies and more weapons. Uh, this thing was advertised like hell. I remember the trailer specifically having... Uh, you know, the alligator in the tunnel, you know, with yep. Leon, and that was a big thing. Uh, my dad got the demo discs and stuff like that, so we, that used to have the trailers on it and uh, the promotional ads. I had a PS Extreme magazine that had Resident Evil 2 on the front uh, when I was a kid, and it had Leon shooting the croc. So this thing was everywhere. You couldn't get away from it. Uh, the the hype surrounding this game really started in that era where you know you people would be able to go out and rent games. You know yep. people would go out to try games, and you would have to you know hear hear it by mouth, and people would go out because back then you couldn't really just look up videos. It was it was very more interactive with you know more tangible uh, to go and grab the game and play it. So by the time Resident Evil Two was getting delayed and stuff, I feel like that made the hype. Uh, you know, bigger when it comes to like, hey, we're going to take it from 1.5, but actually, you know, up it a little bit. And of course, I, I fall under the same category as you. I think, you know, I'm kind of happy 1.5 never really happened because yeah. we got the greatness that is Resident Evil 2. Uh, 1.5, we'll, we'll talk about that on the end as well. But, you know, talking about the origins of Resident Evil 2, we'll talk about it here as well just for a little bit because that was really a different structure kind of game. Uh, it looked like it still had the police station elements, but it was completely redesigned, completely different. Design. Like, they redesigned, like, I want to say, like, 80-90% of the game. Uh, yeah, it seems like... The they Resident scrapped Evil, it completely when they yeah, scrapped 1.5. 1.5 was trying to be 3, I think. It was a lot of outside and not inside. Yeah. And uh, they decided to take the route that they took for Resident Evil 2, and which I'm glad they did, because yeah. I think 2 is very iconic. For a lot of reasons, which we'll get into, yeah, um, and, later on in the podcast. And this started that you know the whole iconic uh, you know um, ego that this game started to have because it was like you know people knew that you know this game was going to be a lot a lot more different, a little bit more dynamic. Of course, we knew you were going to be playing as two different characters from the get go. It was obviously Leon and uh, Elza Walker, yeah, uh, which again two different completely char different characters we ended up with in the game. Sherry looked like she was there from the get-go. Yes. Uh, I feel like her story never really changed besides her interacting with Claire. She was interacting with Elsa differently because, of course, maybe they still had the same connection. Maybe the dialogue was written differently. Who knows what was kind of 
their character wise or character yeah, piece or if wise. Sherry was even Sherry at all. If Sherry was Sherry, it was I, was, just a little I don't girl. even think Ada was around. No. Ada was not around, so that was another thing that was added. Well, I feel like Ada was always there at heart because of what we saw in Resident Evil One with the file about you know, yeah, her, she was quote unquote character. boyfriend, but John, it really was a yeah. fake relationship anyway because they're all just spies and it's all just yeah. bullshit. But uh, it's cool that they expanded on that. But yeah, so the 1.5 demos that are out now, people can actually play certain builds of it. And it's interesting to go back on it. But I, I, I'm kind of looking forward to, you know, if they were to ever release more information about it, with the release of another Resident Evil 2 remake, they would like, you know, have some kind of more concept art or maybe something we didn't necessarily get. Because I mean, there's complete stuff for that game that's just locked away somewhere. Yeah. So it's interesting. Imagine a timeline in our lives where that it came out and that was the stats we got as the sequel. Uh, it's kind of fun to think about and talk about, uh, especially in a lore discussion where you're really talking about the meat and potatoes of it all. But it, it looked, it looked pretty good, but it didn't hold up like Resident Evil 2 held up at the time. Uh, Cause I think once it got scrapped, you know, they re-released Resident Evil director's cut. So this was a time period where they're like, okay, we're sorry. This is a delayed thing. Here's yeah. Resident Evil director's cut with a, you know, um, you know, redone soundtrack after the fact they did that with the DualShock. The first edition came with the RE2 demo. At that point, they were showing you... So that was the first taste of Resident Evil 2, yeah. was that demo. And that got people excited. There was yeah. people buying that game uh, just to play the, just demo. To play the demo. Because, yeah. again, they were like, oh, well, we already played Resident Evil 1, but I want to play this Resident Evil 2 that was has been delayed and been talked about for months. So you can understand, just jumping back in time for that time period, that was a very tangible thing and very organic on how you're getting people excited for this because I feel like RE2 kickstarted the rest of the series and all the successes it had even after the fact with 3 and Kovronica, so on and so forth. 2 really kickstarted that uh, right from the get-go and uh, you know, with as Resident Evil Directors finally came out, Directors Cut and then uh, of course in January of 1998 we got Resident Evil 2. It was finally released and now we're able to actually get our hands on it Came out with two discs. Uh, so, again, at the time, this is an era of a double disc PS1. You had Final Fantasy. Yeah, Final, you had well, Resident Final Fantasy two. was four. <laughs> Nine was four discs. Nine, Eight yeah. was two discs. Seven was, Seven was two discs. Was two. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, a lot of memory. A lot of bit, like a lot of memory on these uh, CDRs, you know. It I was, still believe that two could have fit on one disc. I think they just did it for marketing. Yeah, I, th- I think it sense. was definitely, it was like, you know which one you're playing. Just from the disc. Just from the disc. I still think Resident Evil 2 would have fit on one. And it's, still, and it's cool because whether it, it, it was uh, necessary or not, it gave it a bigger feel. Like it was like a bigger, uh, you yeah. know, like uh, the a scheme grander is, scheme is of things. Yeah, because now you're not just in the mansion, you're outside, you're in Raccoon City, and now you're, you're seeing these new characters who you don't know yet, but you're getting to know. Uh, so, of course, it takes place in, um, in, October or September, October, late September, uh, early October for Resident Evil 3. But this is the whole this side of the story. There's two sides of Raccoon City there's Claire and Leon's side, and then there's Jill's side. Yeah. This side is like the latter half of September, and then Jill's side is the late September into the October when you get past the clock tower and she gets infected and she's unconscious. So, well, Resident Evil 2 takes place between, between the beginning that, of 3 yeah. and the end of 3. Um, but three wasn't out yet, so we wouldn't have known that. Yeah, exactly. it was kind of just the story of Leon and Claire of two survivors trying to survive Raccoon City. Uh, jumping back just for a second, I do want to say, in my personal opinion, that I'll be so bold as to say, if we got 1.5 the way that it was originally presented, Resident Evil would have died as a franchise early. You think so? I, th- I think two. The way that two, to me, you think I saved the series. Yeah, I play a lot of video games. All right. Um, not so much anymore, um, which is something I'm changing. I play mostly just Resident Evil, Final Fantasy, Pokemon, and stuff like that. But I'm trying to get back into gaming because gaming was better back then um, for me personally. But I think Resident Evil 2 is probably one of the most overhyped games that paid off. It is the best. It, it is of the one of the best I think, of late nineties. Yeah, was. it is one of the best sequels that has ever been released, and the, there's tons of reasons why, which we're going to go over. Yeah, exactly. But I think it's interesting That's while we're, we're talking. Yeah, while we're talking about the success of Resident Evil Two and like especially like the marketing, 
uh, if that if that were to happen today, where the game got delayed, you'd have people throwing strikes. Well, yeah, because now you have like, online. And... Even right now, we have people that won't stop bitching about the remake. They're yeah. just like crying like kids, man. And it's like, just let it come out. Yeah, it might be the same situation as two. Because now everything's social media, so you so, have the yeah, direct so access you have the of direct bitching. Access, you have the direct like desire of like you we can want directly updates. tweet the developers. Yeah, like, they're, <laughs> like they're gonna see it. You ain't <laughs> running for me. It doesn't matter anyway. It's, <laughs> it's like, like I, I don't know, but I, it was interesting because like usually games these days that get overhyped, like Resident Evil Two was overmarketed back then, come out and they're awful. Resident Evil Two is one of those few examples that I can remember that come out and then it was great. Um, even things like Pokemon these days they get marketed because Pokemon's a giant franchise, but they don't ever like. Over marketing. That's it's true. It's not like everywhere and, you go. And I feel like now because, and you brought up a good point, because I feel like if you're talking about like, you know, when people initially got presented this game, it would be completely different. Because see, back then, I feel like people were a little bit more grateful because you had, again, you had to wait. Like there wasn't like, I need everything now. I need yeah. like direct, because obviously back then, like there wasn't streaming, there wasn't like click a button and you have something or there wasn't like I need to click a button to find out if news is breaking you had to like wait for the magazine or wait for wait the demo for the, uh, the or demo. rent it because sometimes or rent it people from Blockbuster couldn't, people couldn't yeah. afford these games They're, that was expensive at the time man 55, 60 bucks like, not just not just the expensive part too like people weren't sure if they'd like that too yeah so they could go to yeah. Blockbuster or, or if they heard it. about this game through hype because back then you would just hear word of mouth word and of they're mouth. like oh my god I heard about Resident Evil 2 you'd rush to the video store Blockbuster. Hope nobody else. Was else it. You, you'd lift up the case and hope something was behind it. Uh, and sometimes they'll have more than one copy, but it depends on yeah. You know, it depends volume on the, of yeah, the customer volume of traffic. Customers. Yeah. Uh, and that was always a cool thing. With that, I remember uh, I rented the N sixty four RE two because my hometown video had N sixty four games. To yeah, rent, the cartridge, the yeah. cartridge things, and they would have come in the bigger box. But Which yeah, Blockbuster think, did too. Yeah, Blockbuster yeah. had it too. Uh, I still have a Pokemon chains. Stadium. I never returned. That's cool. Good thing they went under. Yeah, does that have the, sti- that have the sticker on it? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. sticker's still on there. Love us, sir. Uh, me, me and John also found a Resident Evil VHS uh, on Goodwill today. That, or not Goodwill, Thrift Village that had the Blockbuster Yeah, Thrift Store. It. It's awesome. It had the Blockbuster uh, yeah. tape on it. I gotta love those things. But yeah, like I feel like people were more grateful, like you said. and I also They're more think... patient because they weren't used to yeah, like every... everything being so... Like I think one of the biggest problems with gaming now is developers don't know how to keep secrets. They always leak it. Something is always leaked. Uh, somebody wants to be that guy that just makes everybody else, like, happy. Yeah. They're just like, I want to do this so everybody loves me. Which nobody cares who you are because you don't have a name. You're just 69 troller on, you know what I mean? Like, on Reddit or something. Yeah, or, like, like, or like tweeting the developers. Yeah, about, tweeting like, the developers. Why aren't you doing this? Yeah. yeah uh, that, that... Some people in the community right now are just sad. Like, they're so sad to watch people reply to everything that Resident Evil puts out or everything Capcom puts out. And they're, like, sarcastic as hell. And and I'll be honest with and you. And they're starting fights. Yeah, and then they're starting <laughs> fights. <laughs> with, like, <laughs> random people that don't even care that much about Resident Evil. Yeah. Like, a casual person that's, like, like, checking Capcom's just... thing and they reply and they're like, What are you? And they're like, Who the fuck is this? <laughs> I just think, like, honestly, and I don't mean to insult anybody directly here, and but, like, in my opinion, if you're going to be like that, you don't deserve the game. The game doesn't want to be played by you. Yeah, if you're going to put other people yeah. down or make other people or, feel like, bad. Or, like, just cry. Like, it's going to come out. Hopefully, knock on wood, yes, you don't have terminal knock. illness. So you're waiting for this game, and I feel terrible for anybody with terminal illness who's waiting on Kingdom Hearts three. Oh, well, <laughs> that's or uh, Half Life three or Half Life. That's three. another or, one. Any, or any, Left 4 Dead three. Yeah, anything three. Anything Valve related. Yeah, anything. Uh, or uh, well, I mean, or he, Dead Space. Here's the thing, four. man. Like back then, you know, the rest of the community, it wasn't even a community. At it that wasn't point. a you community just, at all. You're just a fan of a game that yeah. had one game come out, and you're like. Oh, I hope the sequel's great. I think the sequel started this Resident Evil community. It Resident did. Evil 2, it laid the foundation... No, Resident Evil 1 laid the foundation down. 
This built the actual uh, insides of what we know as Resident Evil, the core yeah. of what we know and love about Resident Evil, which is why the fans connected because they said, hey, this is a game that we all really enjoy a lot more than the first one. Not taking anything away from the first one because it's classic yeah, in its own right, but of course, like, this was the game to get. And like you game. said, it's arguably the best sequel of all time, and, and I it, agree. It, it is one of the better sequels that I've ever played. I think... Like, a lot of people will say that. Yeah, you know? as a game, like, as a game itself... Like, when I think of, like, Final Fantasy, and then I think of Final Fantasy 2, like, they're both good games, but 2 doesn't add as much as Resident Evil 2 adds to the first game, or, like, doesn't improve upon as much as as Resident Evil 2 has improved upon the first game. Because that's what you have to look at. You have to really look at, like, okay, what did this game do to step up to the plate to be different? Because at the same time, you're thinking about, you know... Like, when I think of sequels, yeah, like, when I think of sequels that are good... I think of Pokemon Gold and Silver improves so much on Red and Blue that it, it is probably up there with Resident Evil 2 for me. Um, Resident Evil 2, Pokemon Gold and Silver, and that's really like the two that stand out. Um, I can't really think of anything else that was like as game-changing. Like, at the second game was so much better than the first game. Not, but, I'm not saying Red and Blue are bad or Resident Evil 1 are bad. Yeah. But it's so it's much to pick that. more of a core. Yeah, it's kind of like a movie, too. There's movie sequels that are arguably better than the first, but it's hard, it's few and far between. But, but movie sequels make sense, too, because, like, as you get... As long as it's the same director and the same storytelling team and stuff like that, like, as you get better technology... Your movie's going to look better. Yeah. So absolutely. what defines a great movie? Does it define it just by based on what it looks like? Or the budget. Or does or, it decide yeah. decided based on like how much you enjoyed it? Um, for me, gaming's a little different, especially within those core years. The technology between one, two, and three are really not that different. Yeah. It's no, just it's... the practices that were different, and they still sit together well. One obviously looks the worst. It just does. Um, but. It's forgivable how much they improved on 2. Like, how much 2 is is a better mechanically sound game than 1? The voice acting, the storytelling. Yeah. Which, is, I mean, the storytelling is still not fantastic, but it's not like Final Fantasy level. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's still like... It's it, B-movie-esque. It's, it's, yeah. it's there to give you it's there to something give you to bounce off of, you know? Um, there are some flaws that Resident Evil has, but... As a Resident Evil game, it, it improved so much on the first one that it almost makes three. Not that I'm saying three is a bad game because I love three. We were just playing on but, the Dreamcast, <laughs> which we were, yeah. But it almost makes three seem not as impressive because I don't think three improves on two a lot. There's not a lot it does different. Mm-hmm. It's just like those Assassin's Creed. It's it's kind of like, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind yeah, of thing, it's kind of like, like they okay, just okay. This recipe worked with this. What do we do to make it different? Because nobody wants to play the same exact thing. And they did some which things I agree. That made so they gave you like the yeah. dodge, which is perfect addition. The nemesis, nemesis, nemesis in general, in general, chasing you is kind of like that Mister X esque uh, chase, but he's a little bit more. And... Yeah, he's a little bit more. And core three is of the also, game. I don't know. It's our. It looks it's better. A, it's it it does, but it's it's. I feel like that that could be a, that could be a challenge if three is longer than two or two is longer than three because it depends on how you play through it. Two is longer. People than can three. make two their bitch. People can beat two. You could beat two. It's super fast. Yeah, like, but so I, you can beat three in forty three minutes. So three is a smaller PC, game. By the way, where yeah, you can PC. skip the door time. Uh, Resident Evil Two, I think, is like an hour and ten or an hour or something like that. Okay. Um, but two is also a longer game because it just has the. B scenario. Yeah. If you're so you have about the four game, ways to play it. Like when we, like when me and John did Nightmare Mode, it took us nine hours to do both scenarios on the hardest mode. Which we also died. Which we also died. Twelve times. Co- but that's still pretty or good. 11, 11 times. That's yeah. still pretty good though compared to other people that, yeah. you know, might not be able to, to Can't even get, get past through. The yeah. First servers. Yeah. We, we couldn't get past. When we first played, we, me, Dustin and John had trouble. Yeah, we had trouble getting to we the police trouble. station. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't even on the stream. This was just kind of like a yeah, uh, we fun playing. attempt because uh, they never saw the Dreamcast version before. So one night I just brought my Dreamcast and I gave it to John before I got out of work. We just sat down and played it. But we'll get to the different ports because what you mentioned yeah, about we're mechanics, talk about the ports. each game, two and three, because those were the games that they ported the most yeah. of. 
they improved in each different port. So with two Dreamcast, GameCube, yeah. and PC, we'll get into that. Which, we'll, which what what they improved and yeah. went back on and changed. We'll do like a mini podcast on three um, later. I don't think we need to talk about three today because no. three is really not that much to I, talk about. I want three to be its own podcast, but I don't want it's my favorite. But I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like I don't want three to take up too much time today. Yeah. But I also don't want three to. Because 3 could get absorbed into this easy, because there's can. really not much to talk about. Yeah. But uh, I think 3 could be like a 35, 40 minute podcast. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll put in some segments in there too. Uh, I'm working with Crimson Head Elder right now, and the guys over there, shout out to you guys. We're uh, working in certain segments that uh, information that they're going to give us uh, from their inside sources, uh, from translations, I'm going to be able to read them on the show. So this is stuff that we may even do in this podcast or the next one, but stay tuned for that. We're going to end up breaking it up into segments, cool. but I like Steve's, uh, Steve had an idea where we can record the Resident Evil 3 podcast, and like, I could invite Steve on there too if he wants to talk about it, but we can do it where it's like we can start making story elements into the podcast. So it's like we're podcasting, and then we're acting like what's going on in Raccoon City is actually ha- I'll explain it later. Yeah, I have this I weird wider thing i was like we could do something really cool we can have like radio broadcast transmissions and stuff we're gonna do some pretty cool stuff so up some change ups so some uh, uh, some change some yeah. change ups here and this it'll kick out with the re2 origin stuff but yeah so going back to um so all that stuff just like getting into detail with yeah like the upgrades all the upgrades yeah to. obviously it's a bigger batter game uh, bigger better batter engine game. they definitely better improve engine. the engine you can have a lot more stuff happening at once you have Multiple zombies on screen. Uh, sounds better. Sounds better. There's like fire and stuff in the background. The pre-rendered uh, backgrounds are a lot more polished. Hitboxes are better. Hitboxes are a lot better. Um, um, even things like being even able running. to shoot zombies. Yeah, running. Running is smoother. Smoother. Yeah. Shooting zombies is smoother. One of the things that like uh, I was talking about with Dustin. Shout out to Dustin. But one of the things is uh, in Resident Evil 1, when zombies are getting up, you can't shoot them. No. They're, they're invincible. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people waste bullets that way. And two, you can actually hit them. Um, as they're getting up and as, yeah, as you can just Yeah, you can still down. shoot them. Headshots are cleaner. Uh, you have a better angle to pull off some more, like, tricky shots. Mm-hmm. Like, where you can get triple headshots yeah. or double headshots. There's a feeling of being overwhelmed, uh, yeah. which is something that's very, very scary. And I think that's why... They kept that uh, two and three both for me have one of the most uh, intense elements to those games. Three obviously with Nemesis, but two uh, for the fact that imagine playing this for the first time back then, and you don't know what a liquor is, You're used to you don't know small. who Birkin is, you don't know what Mister X is. You're used to these smaller downscaled enemies. Of course, you had to deal with like you know hunters and snakes and but they still move slow. But they move pretty slow, and it wasn't quite there yet. Even the tyrant being a final boss. In my opinion, it is iconic, the helipad stuff, but as a boss, he has nothing on Birkin or even Nemesis, in my opinion. No. Now, Nemesis... some people might say Tyrant's their favorite and to each his own, but I think as they structure those bosses, where if you're playing two for the first time and you're like, holy shit, like, how am I going to do this? Cause it gets thing, pretty intense. Because yeah, the thing with if, with one is it's a very, one is a very slow paced game. Yeah, so definitely. One is like, yeah. It's kind of breaking the going ice. going and going yeah. and going and going and going. And then boss. And then you do a little bit more. And then you fight a boss. And then you do a little bit more. And then you fight the final boss. And then you talk to Barry. Yeah. And you <laughs> if talk you're to Jill. Barry, if you're Jill. Or if you're Chris, you let Rebecca die. Because yeah. fuck Rebecca. No, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but then Resident Evil 2, it's like you go so far without a boss. And yeah. And then it's boss, 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 boss. Like he just is there yeah. all the time. Well, because it's also because think about placing placement, right? So this game, the majority of it is the police station, uh, even underground and in these weird dungeons and tunnels yeah. and shit that you're like, how the fuck did they sewers, design this? Yeah, the sewers. sewers. So the way the game is structured is once you're thrown into the police station, getting these keys and getting these files, and it's kind of get leaving you breadcrumbs to the next point uh, where you go to the star's office and you get to kind of get more in depth. Uh, details about the stars members. You know, you get to see some of their desks. You get to see a picture of all them. Uh, Wesker's desk. You're kind of thinking, like, where are these people now? Where's yeah. Chris? Because Which, she's looking yeah. for Chris. If you're Claire, if you're Leon, Leon obviously, you know, dealing with a breakup, uh, didn't get much sleep. First day on the job. Yeah, first day on the job. Uh, but yeah, well, we also talked about that on the stream, but that is canon. Yeah, it's uh, canon. Not yeah. a lot of people know that if you want to explain why yeah, he was... Yeah, it's canon. That's so he, was, he broke up with his girlfriend and he was staying in a hotel. 
because uh, I guess she threw him out. Uh, maybe they and together. that explains why he didn't know, right? Yeah, that's Is why that he didn't know because yeah. he was like right on the outskirts. Um, and then he got up. He was late because he had a hangover, and he got in his car and he drove to Raccoon City. And while I guess all this shit happened, I, ignoring all the barricades and stuff, because he was like, whatever. I guess this place. He's like, damn. Damn, yeah, what they kind of really need, kind of they really needed this. me. Yeah, yeah, he's like, damn, they really needed me. And he drives in, and that's it. This and stuff, he gets runs out, into Claire, and, and he's too far into the city, and they just they have to survive run. together. Yeah, and, and the uh, whole idea behind it, like why he goes from the police station to the sewers to the lab, is because they're trying to find a way out that doesn't involve running through the city. Yeah, because running through the city, even though like people like us could dodge every zombie. In real, like in the situation, they would be dead. Yeah, they they wouldn't survive. So that. realistically, they have to look for other ways out, and one of them is dealing with because the game a, has to game. The game has to game, but like legit, you, the the like the real way that these games are like would play out. Um, none of our characters are ever getting bitten or sliced or anything, except for Leon gets shot. Yeah, that's something that happens. Because at, at this point, because most times I feel like if they were to go to the police station earlier within the outbreak, there would have been t- t- like. Dozens and dozens of people trying to get police help and everything. Mm-hmm. This is after the fact, where there's this nobody left. Like, if you went there, you could almost get trampled. Like, one of the things that the Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks, when he wrote that, he said the one place you want to avoid is hospitals and police stations, because that's where people can get trampled. Yeah. People will be screaming and yelling, trying to get help. So this is after the fact. There's nobody left in the police station besides the zombies that are left crawling around. Well, and Marvin. And Marvin, that's... Kind of like dying, and uh, uh, Edward Elliot, and, and you got Edward Elliot. <laughs> chief, you got Chief Irons, Chief, uh, chief Irons, the crazy Chief, Edward Elliot, Sherry Birkin, Claire Redfield, Marvin B, and, and Tofu. No, <laughs> it's Brennan, uh, but ben, and Leon Scott Kennedy and Ben, ben Bertolucci, yeah, Ben too, yeah. and Ada Wong. Yeah, they're the only people in the city that are alive. And they as all end now. up kind of, yeah, as, as of, of now. now. I mean, there's all those people in Outbreak, too, Yeah, but we don't need to get into Yeah, that's that. not even... Yeah, that's canon, like, but we don't need to get into It's canon, it. but yeah, it's not... In this time frame right now, we're dealing with these characters, and now with, uh, obviously, Chief Irons, who I mentioned, he's the dickhead chief who's in, in on it. Uh, he did not obviously believe them when they told him the information about the mansion, so the Stars team as a whole at this point is completely disbanded. Uh, yeah. Jill's doing her own thing, obviously, in her apartment in the city. Uh, and then, you know, Claire is trying to f- kind of piece together what happened. But at this point, the only person that's left reminiscent of that area would be Chief Irons, and he's a crazy rapist killer. Yeah, the crazy, like, crazy. he's wanted on, like, multiple accounts of rape, but somehow became the chief of police. So, yeah, because he probably... had good grades. Yeah, something yeah. like that. He was, yeah. a, he was a, on, under accounts, uh, accounts of rape, uh, multiple accounts of rape while he was in school. And then he got like good grades and got let off. He let and then became off the and chief, and then became a skin wearer. Yeah, he came. <laughs> he came. Uh, he came close to. Uh, uh, did you ever read his diary? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. He's just like, I decided that I'm just going to hunt them down myself. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, I'm just going to kill them myself. Um, you know? I still think uh, the the one he shot in the back. Is the one on the floor yeah. in the safe room? Yeah, I think so. He's just like laying there. Yeah, because he's just laying there. He just it's killed like, everyone. It's like so he just killed Edward. He's you know, he's, and then he killed Elliot. And then yeah. he killed El- Edward Elliot. Yeah. So it, here's the thing: he's in it with Umbrella. So the you know he the stars team is trying their best to have him believe him. He wouldn't believe him. Which obviously Umbrella didn't care for him. No, because they left him there. So yeah. He must have got betrayed. That's why he would lock himself in his dungeon, which is probably what he deserves. But yeah, so you got to deal with him. Uh, so uh, this game. Kind of explores he, on more of like how people respond. He just went crazy. Yeah, like by the t- like when Claire. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody's leaving my city alive. <laughs> Everyone's gonna die. Not even me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing because he, he's uh, crazy, dude. Well, that's what I like about this game is that you're seeing what the outbreak has effects on certain people. Well, people that were fucked anyway from the beginning, yeah. and people that turned. Uh, to other desperate measures to survive. Uh, Shara being one of them, because obviously her mom, Annette, is running around trying to find her. Well, no. Her mom's not trying to find her. Her mom sent her to the police station. Her mom just sent her there. Just but sent then, her there, and then when she finds out that, when she's, she finds out she's in the lab, in the lab that's when she's like, the oh my god. like, oh god, because yeah. William won't go to the police station, which yeah. he did, he doesn't. No. He's like, I'm not going up there, this is my jungle. Yeah. Although he does go to the uh, the plug room. That's true. 
He goes to the plug room, which is strange, but that's the sewer And she entrance. knows, obviously, about Birkin roaming around, so that's why she's kind yeah. of running around in the and lab. She's, and she fires contact yep. based on the file. Um, so they 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 familiarize themselves, and then like every third Friday, remember that file? Yeah. Every day they visit the sewers. It's 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 a long thing. We're not gonna get into all that, but <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's definitely those are guys are in cahoots with each other. But it's cool files. that also the files talking about the lore for a second. The files really give some of these newer characters more. Like you're not just getting these characters and then nothing else. You're getting these characters and then also the files you read and you kind of piece it together in your own head. To interpret maybe how they got there, or how, you know, they are as a family, or how... And it kind of lays the foundation for, like, what happened before Leon and Claire get there. Exactly. Because it's, like, the operation reports and stuff that say, like, oh, the barricades are really bad, and then the next one's like, oh, yeah, we lost the guy who wrote the last one. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, the guy who wrote the first one dies, and then the second one you find in the dark room is like, yeah, we kind of lost him. He's yeah, dead. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not around. And anymore. for some reason our ammunition... Oh, and that's the other thing Chief does. Chief's like, I made sure no cops would come help. Yeah, I made yeah. sure. He's like, I've made sure all the ammunition scattered all over the building. It's like, he's just a crazy fucker, dude. And that's why there's ammo everywhere. Everywhere. Because he just like took the... every. There's like an ammo behind the statue. He's like, nobody will check here. Like, nobody's checking the statue. It's a you just fixed see him... camera angle. <laughs> yeah. The camera's not facing this direction. Nobody would ever find this 15 <laughs> pickup of handgun ammo. Yeah, yeah that's kind crazy. of interesting. As, oh, as they we that forgot why. Uh, Kendo. Don't forget Kendo. He's, a, yeah. he's alive for five minutes. Kendo's alive for five minutes. Yeah. He's one of the first people you run into uh, in the city. And uh, he's nice to you if you're Sorry Claire. He's kind of a that. dick if you're Leon. Uh, so I ain't got no clue, darling. And he has the crossbow. Or the uh, shotgun. Or the shotgun. And it's up to you whether or not you want to pick it up. You're going to find another one later. Uh, or yeah. shoddy. Like, you get both. You get both. Uh, one in the, the shed and then one later in the uh, underground. But, uh, yeah, so... That that was the main thing with with those characters again expanding on that. I think they also had the 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 best kind of uh, mentality when going into okay, we're gonna we're gonna really show how they're gonna structure this story because the BOWs now forming from the G virus. That's the main thing this game is really underlined with is the G virus. Well, so, the BO yeah, the BOWs that are in the game like the liquors and the humans and stuff, they're still T virus. They're still T virus. It's the only G from the other game. Yeah, the only G virus thing that I'm aware of is Birkin because he's the only one that took it directly. Yeah, and he's the main staple of the game because And the only he's... other one is in um hmm would Mr. X be considered? That is Degeneration. Considered. Right? Is the only other G-Virus. Mr. X so. is T. Yeah. I think in the movie, Degeneration, that guy, Curtis yeah. Miller, That's right? Very, very, yeah, He's I the only he, other guy that I know that has the he had the eye and everything. Yeah, it's, well, that was the G-Virus because yeah. they had it in the building. And he took it and he's like, this is mine now. It's like... I guess... Uh, yeah, that's the only two. So the G-Virus is running... Like, really valuable, because it's stronger than the T-Virus. Obviously. They grow, like, eyes and claws mm-hmm. and shit. Like, it's crazy. Like, do they see out of that eye? Yeah, I... Because, like, his face goes into the body, and then he grows another head. Yeah, he grows, like, another head. And then he grows an eye, and it's just... It's There's crazy. multiple eyes and heads and all that stuff. Uh, but, yeah, so... The... That, that's the one thing that I liked about this game. Of course, you you have more enemies there and, and weapons. Your arsenal's bigger. The yeah, side newer, packs. Newer there's... Enemies. Hunters are out. Liquors are in. Yeah. Um, L- liquor bees, uh, which are like the black ones. Yeah, the, the the black ones. There's also green ones. Yeah. There's two colors, I'm pretty sure. But I think the one's exclusive to extreme battle mode. And then... Uh, you know, there's there's things to do around the police station that can like help you, like the wires, Cerberus, crows. There's, yeah, there's the servers, hunters. Um, yeah, the wires, which actually fuck you. Yeah, because like the wire, everything you do in A uh, makes B harder. So if you don't like, if you put the wires in a room in B, they break, they open up, they short circuits, and they oh, zombies come. I in. usually just put it on the other room that's closer to the basement, because like, if you put it by yeah. the one by the liquor, it's like, you don't really have to run there Well, that's that the thing, often. If, you, if you put it in the one that's closer by the basement, um, when Leon's coming back, they break open. And you have to run through them. I know, I was on danger in the B scenario when you were sleeping. Oh, no. <laughs> when you were sleeping, I ran, I didn't die. Uh, but... I'm pretty sure you were sleeping at that point. Yeah. I, I was died. only knocked for like a half hour and then I was just kind of like... You were out for like two. 
Not two hours. Yeah, you were, dude. Go back and watch There's it. There's no way. You were like an hour and a half out. You were sleeping on the hour, floor. Hour and a half, I believe. That. Hour and a half, yeah. Well, it it's because I had to take you home. I was like, I don't want to fall asleep. Yeah, I know. Like, I didn't care. I was just saying you missed like a lot. And, I, and then I was like, Luzzy, hey, I'm at the end. You like, got this. I was like, you got this. <laughs> You're just like, you got this. Your voice just comes in out of nowhere. You got this. But, yeah, uh, uh, you know it's 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 uh, it's cool because you know we'll we'll talk about the different modes, of course, and uh, yeah. So the story, we'll go over the story real quick. Yeah. So basically, all of it is, we'll just give a synopsis. You've got two people who come to Raccoon City, one searching for her brother, one first day on the job, terrible first day, by the way. Yeah, worst um, first day ever. Oh, three people come to the city. Why'd he bite me? Yeah. Yeah. Why'd he bite me? Why'd he bite me? That guy's a maniac. He is like the MVP. Like, he really where, is. Where is he throwing zombies through windows? And how are they going to redo that in the remake? Are they going to? They have to have the same guy come back. Yeah, they have the same him. guy, and he has to like not throw him through a glass window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he threw that guy. How did he do that? <laughs> through like shopping. He must have been like the strongest motherfucker. Like that's insane. Like, they just should put Mark Henry there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just put Mark Henry there. But uh, <gasps> oh, tsh- um. They come, they meet up, they get split up, you know. The truck, that the why the you truck, bite me. Yeah, the why you bite me guy who yep. runs into them. Uh, they go to the police station. Basically, the synopsis is they're trying to escape, and that's the whole story premise of it. Yeah. They're just trying to escape from the city alive and try to figure out. Like, some people have, like, this underlying thing. Like, in Resident Evil 1, Jill and Chris went to research because that's what they're there for. They're like, hey, this yeah. is, we need to investigate. Because people they are going They went deeper missing. into the mansion. Yeah. Right? Gleon and Claire didn't necessarily go into the lab because they wanted to figure out what the fuck was going on. They went into the lab because, unfortunately, that was the safest way. The safest... They kept getting led on, like, by Ben. Or by Chief... Well, or Chief trying, Irons doesn't really trying tell Trying to, you know, chase Sherry around. But, like, she was, Ben yeah. tells Leon, hey, you know, there's an underground sewer... That leads to a lab that you can get out of here. And nobody n- knew that. And he's just from... like, Leon's like, okay. And then Ada runs away. So it's just kind of like fumbling upon point A, B, C. Like, it's just kind of like... Yeah, just... so it's just like they're trying to escape and they uncover things while they're trying to escape. They weren't researching or, yeah. s- or investigating. They were they're just, really trying just to... trying to get the hell out. Because And I then mean... the, the priority changes because once they get there, Sherry's infected and then they have to save her. Uh, well, Claire does. And, and they then, can't leave without her. Yeah, and, and then, then Leon, Leon loses doesn't want to leave without Claire. Loses Ada. Leon doesn't want to leave without Claire. Um, and it's like, it's really cool. It's like there's camaraderie. Or camaraderie? Camaraderie? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> but uh, there's like, between Leon and Claire, even though they don't see each other a lot. And that's because the story is supposed to be presented where they're together. Yeah. I think. A hundred percent. Like, yeah. Dark Side Chronicles does a good job. I think it still slips up in some areas. But it does a good job of, like, communicating. Keeping them like, together. They do split up sometimes because, like, Ada's going one way, Sherry's going the other. So um, it gives them a reason to, like, It gives separate. them a reason to kind of separate. And they do get forcibly separated sometimes, I'm sure. But they, most of the time, like, you know, Leon, I'll go look for her. You go find us a way out of here. Like, they do split up. I think it's more along the lines of, like, they care about each other because they're the only two left. They're the only two shoulders that they have. And then Sherry's a little girl, so she's an innocent. Um, she's, like, her mom and dad are scientists, and they all they're the worst possible people to yeah. have as parents. Definitely the worst ever. Um, Which I'm happy we were able to see Sherry later in 6. 6, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. I, I was really happy to... to that's, it's cool to see was, her come out. I, I think it's crazy. She was favorite part of 6. Yeah, I think it's crazy that, like, she walks up, and then Leon's just like, Sherry? Yeah. Like, like he just knows that she's there. Yeah. Like, he doesn't, like, ask or anything, because that means that they've been in they, communication yeah, they before have, that. They have. Uh, especially after events like this, where it's so life-changing. I mean, Raccoon City changes all of their lives forever. Uh, and I think that's what this game really gets across is how dramatic it is. Because, I mean, also they need to get the fuck out of Dodge before the fucking place goes up in a nuke. So which they like, don't know. Which they don't know. They don't even know that so, it's going So, like, they, they just needed to get out as soon as possible before things got worse. And they did. Uh, but that's the thing. It's, uh, I really, I really like the fact that, you know, this really laid the groundwork for a lot of people's favorite Resident Evil characters. I mean, Leon and Claire is Leon's one of the favorites. Leon's definitely the yeah. fan favorite. I think Leon's probably the poster child of Resident Evil. I think so. Even though Chris is the first one and they, like, reuse him again and again, too. 
Leon's definitely the but face. He, people Leon see. was part of the biggest Resident Evil. Yeah, and I another think, thing like know. even in four, we're not going to spoil like the rest of the story, like all the details and stuff. But like we, Most one people, thing the majority of people, people played yeah, it they've already. played it, so yeah. they understand what's going on. But. The, the one thing about Resident Evil 2 that I was talking with Dustin about is that it's like the most important game. And the reason why it's the most important game is because there is connections, especially like if you take into consideration all the ports. Mm-hmm. So if you've played the Dreamcast, the PC, uh, the PlayStation 1, the PC, the Nintendo 64, and the GameCube versions, yeah. like if you played all of those and you've read everything and you've been and you've beat them all and you've done everything, there is so many connections to every other Resident Evil game. The only one that doesn't have a connection is Five, which really it, it, Five's connection is it's the T virus, so it's the progenitor virus and all that. So it's like unraveling, and it kind of brings things full circle with like Jill and Chris and yeah. Wesker, and so kind like of like everything trying to bury that like yeah storyline that trio. Yeah, everything is connected to two. So like two is the final days before the the, the umbrella basically goes under. Their stock market crashes. Yeah, everything's and over after that. Leon is linked to four because that's where Leon is. Leon's linked to six. Every eight is linked to six. Eight is linked to four. Um, Claire's linked to Code Veronica. There's files in Resident Evil 2's extra files in the game or the Nintendo 64 version that talk about the Ashfords. Um, there is a Easter egg where your name is Nemesis instead of Guest for the yes, three, for absolutely. the third game. Nemesis is it's linked to way. the third game because it takes place before she falls asleep or after she falls asleep and before she wakes up. It's linked in Raccoon City. You go to Stars. You meet. You see the desks of these people. Claire is directly related to Chris, who is in the first game. Looking in for Code Veronica in five and at that and po- six. And at, the, at the point of of the of the start of two, Chris is already on his way to end Umbrella in Antarctica with Jill by the yep. end of three. And because Leon is in every CGI film that that are that's canon, he's linked to those. So those link back to two because those are the origins. Resident Evil as a franchise started in Raccoon City. Like, 2 is the most important game in terms of building the world. Absolutely. Which is a lot common in sequels, especially, like, books. When you're trying to yeah. top you start, or do something better... You start, and then you build the world. Exactly. And then you expand like, the Like we said earlier, laying the foundation yeah. and then building everything else around so that. So it's like foundation. Resident Evil drew the map, Resident Evil 2 put the locations on there. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's my favorite, I think, is because, like, every other game... And I feel like a lot of people listening to this will agree, so... I mean, you can... You, like, even Survivor. Yeah. Ark Thompson's Leon's friend. Yeah, it's Like, canon. he's his friend. Uh, in Outbreak... Shout out to Mark Main. Always talks about Survivor. Yeah. Never lets uh, it go. Even in Outbreak, uh, Kevin, the, the Stars Officer... Yeah. Or not the Stars Officer, the wannabe Stars Officer. Yeah. The RPD has flavor text in the game where he's like, oh, these are raccoon shark tickets... I should take my friend Leon. Like, even Outbreak has references to Resident Evil 2. I mean, Outbreak obviously takes place in Raccoon City as well. But it it goes back to... But it goes it goes back. Uh, and it's just, those two characters, Leon and Claire, are such a pinnacle... Iconic. Yeah, they're, it's, they're more than just poster ch- children. Like, they're, they're the... To me, even though Jill and Chris was first, Leon and Claire is Resident Evil to me. And that, they just, they go through the most shit. It feels like. Like, Chris and Jill obviously went through all the stars, and then you've got, like, Barry and Rebecca who kind of just fall off. They're kind of, like, sprinkled in. They're, like, support characters. Yeah, because it's like, Rebecca, we finally saw the Although Barry was her in, yeah, in Revelations CGI, 2. Yeah, Barry's in Revelations 2, so that was the most recent things that they've Which been makes in. sense, because Rebecca gets pulled away from combat, so she gets pulled off the game. Yeah, so she's a scientist now, which I could always have seen her, you know, she's a medic, scientist, I mean, she's For sure. she was always the brain, so, like, I'm happy they kind of, like, followed that. Barry just kind of, like, you know, uh, Barry just kind of fell off for a couple years after three, you're guessing, after he flies yeah. you out. Um, but that's a good point. I, so I, it's I, like, it's all connected to two. That's yeah. why people love it, and I think it's it's a... Like, it's if we, like we'll like we play a little game. Name a Resident Evil game, and I'll tell you how it's connected to two. Anyone? And you, can, I can't just say... It's got to be canon, and I can't just say it's a Resident Evil game. Like, like go down the line. So, like, sequel to sequel? Yeah, anything. Code Veronica. Code Veronica is Claire, who is related to two. Ashford's are mentioned in two. This is Extra Files, at least. Chris comes to save Claire. Um, 
Ashford is direct in com in competition. Oh, and Leon too. Remember, she's yeah, like, she's email Leon. Yeah, email Leon. Yeah. And uh, and he is directly in um, uh, arrival with Veronica because mm-hmm. she was like insanely intelligent. Yeah. So she's William Birkin's like motivation to like not fuck up. It's like said like yeah. in the thing. He's like, don't let Veronica get my. In the remake, in yeah. the file at the end, like I won't let Veronica win this time or whatever. Next, uh, hmm. how about I'm trying to think of something that's good? Uh, Gaiden, no, not Gaiden. Uh, Gaiden's not Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, not. Leon's in it. Leon's in it. <laughs> there he we go. He's green, but you he, know, if well, you shoot the wrong one, which Barry does apparently. Uh. uh I was going to say dead aim, but that's a dickhead answer. Um, Not necessarily, because I can answer it. Dead aim. Um, That is canon. The main character is in the same... Well, I guess this is more along the lines of Leon, but the main character is in the same special operative forces as Leon is, because he wears the same clothes as as Leon does Resident Evil 4. And dead aim is still the T-Virus. Again, link back to, to Raccoon some, City. To Raccoon City and some of too. Okay. Yeah, it all stems back. Even even four. I could say four. four yeah, four, four is, direct, is like, Leon. Yeah. The, the fall of Umbrella post 2000s. Yeah. Um, kind of going. direct sequel after three because there was a bunch Los of Illuminados in between. Yeah. Uh, was in cahoots with somebody. Who was it? Isn't it like they mixed it with the Code Veronica virus or Some, something was, like that? Yeah, something like that. Or was that, that Ouroboros? Maybe that was Ouroboros. Ouroboros, yeah. I think, from 5, yeah. It's like Code but Veronica. But Ouroboros was also stemmed from the Parasite from Lost Plagas. It's like Parasite yeah. and Code Veronica or something like that. Because uh, that's what Chris says. He's like, this is the, like the reports from the Kennedy incident. Or they call it the Kennedy reports, like yeah. when he was in Spain. Uh, yeah, it's always in some weird different country, and that's how it stems from, like, Africa or Spain. Uh, but again... RE4 has one of the, my favorite settings. I love, like, the woods and just, like, the cold, dark, just nothingness that's in that area that they set play. It's so cool. I, I liked 4, too. It had its own aesthetic. Yeah, 4 was definitely... It had its own aesthetic, yeah. I like it. 4 is very that. enjoyable. So is 5. Yeah. I like 5, too. I like 5. I think I'll like 5 more playing with you. Absolutely. The co-op yeah. is, saves that game 100%. I still play that game. Sheva is not reliable. No, no. Uh, I like 4's setting better. I do like the fact that it was darker... The sun in five was supposed to take pl- like it was. I remember when the, the game was coming out. I used to read you would have to fight in really uh, hard and and heated conditions where it's going to affect your gameplay. They never put that in the game. Yeah, they never. Put but it. they said that the heat was, was gonna play. Heat was going to play a part in like how you could survive or like you need to like cool down. But they never did anything. So that's a little fun fact there. But yeah, um, I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, because I would have like, 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 just made it harder. Yeah, I don't, honestly, I, don't know. I wouldn't um, like that. But yeah, I mean, as a whole, again, we're covering a lot of ground here. But of course, there's different ports of Resident Evil Two that started yeah. to get. So, uh, you know, the first one being, you know, obviously the PlayStation. Well, we don't have port. to talk about the port. Well, the PlayStation was the original. Yeah. So there's PlayStation. The next, the next one was the, the next one was the Dual Shock, which that had Rookie Mode. We say ports. We mean additions. Basically. Yeah, additions. It's ports and additions. So you've got the two PlayStation ones with the rookie mode. Yeah, and then and you have the and then you have the uh, N sixty four came out first. That the Nintendo sixty four then first. came out, which ninety nine, right? That came out yeah, in ninety nine, which is ported by Angel Studios, which um, is also formerly a Rockstar. It was Rockstar. It, it became Rockstar. Rockstar. It became yeah. Rockstar, which so we didn't know formal. until like a couple days ago. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Um, so Angel Studios is responsible for fixing the grammar errors, changing the puzzles. <laughs> Changing the safe lock from 2236. Um, there's grammar issues. They're responsible for putting in the extra files, which I guess... I wonder if Angel Studios was working on Zero. I wonder. They had to have been. Because they had the certain engine to run like, it on a cartridge. Because they added that stuff. In. Yeah. And, so that's something we And you could also research. change the blood color. You could change the blood color and the violence difficulty. Mm. Or the violence, I mean. Uh, you also... Have instead of having rookie mode, you have training mode. Training. Um. What else? You have the extra files, which we said. Extra files that talk about Code Veronica. Yep. Um, and they mention Barry, and they mention Rebecca. Rebecca's report on Billy Cohen's in it from Zero, and then you've got um, some of the notes that Jill picks up. 
you get the hot dog stand note. Yeah. Which is like, mentions the, uh, uh, it's escaping me. UCB? UBC? Umbrella? UBC? UBCS? UBCS. Yeah, I think it's that. The Special Forces. Um, Car- Nikolai's team. Yeah, they're yeah. mentioned on the hot dog cart. There's just the report. Yeah. Um, so they're even mentioned in the Resident Evil 2. It's like, who the hell are these people? Yeah, and they just ended up being umbrella puppets to yeah. be sent in. Nikolai was just using his men, and Nikolai was also being used, so it's just a counteract of getting double, double cross and fucked. Umbrella does it all the time. Yeah, it's just, it's just an umbrella. If you're an umbrella, that's why like I'm just thinking, I'm like, why would Chris ever... I'm not even going to talk about Seven. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I digress. The uh, Yeah, the ports are awesome, and uh, we've been playing more of the ports as well together, uh, but... The you ends, got the Dreamcast. I got the Dreamcast version, which, so, of course, we did our stream on, so if any of you that watched the stream, you know that Dreamcast also has Nightmare Mode, exclusive yes, to... Nightmare Mode. We'll talk about PC and Dreamcast the same way, because yeah, they're, they're very they're they're the, very the same. Uh, Dreamcast has the infinite ammo. Dreamcast does have the infinite ammo code. Once you beat it, um, both scenarios, you unlock it to where you can just make the gun infinite ammo, which is pretty cool. Which was what? Um, that was... Uh, it was like... Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, or something. A, B, or yeah. A select or and it, it had a cool, like, picture of uh, Claire and uh, Leon. Leon in, like, anime. In anime, which is it's awesome. Like anime uh, they also have concept art you can look through. You can yeah, unlock. and you get the models and stuff. You get the models. Uh, you can also, again, there's expert mode as well on Dreamcast, which you have to beat. On Dreamcast and PC, expert, you, you have to, from the get-go, you can pick expert mode yeah to beat to get nightmare you have to beat expert mode which expert mode is really easy like you can get through it pretty quickly uh and then you'll unlock the nightmare mode but yeah dreamcast and pc definitely look the best yes. uh definitely smoother textures uh you know and of course uh, they don't have the additional files though that's the only yeah, thing they don't have the additional files and, and then you... gamecube doesn't have the additional files. yeah so it's weird because the dreamcast doesn't have nightmare mode no but can skip cutscenes which none of the other ones can none do. of the other ones can so Dreamcast version came out in 2000, same thing with the Resident Evil 3, and then Resident Evil 2 came out in 2002, 2003, 2003, when they were released 2 and 3 on the GameCube. So, uh, yeah, but the 2, yeah, no additional files on the GameCube version, uh, cutscenes look a little bit brighter, sharper, um, runs pretty smooth uh, for yeah. the GameCube, but again, nothing too crazy on that one, but the GameCube one's more just, GameCube is more on terms of, like, the PS1 version. For more sure. than anything, because like it doesn't have the additional stuff. It just has yeah, it's just bare bones. It's just bare bones. Uh, it has extreme battle mode. Though. Yeah, as the yeah, any extreme battle modes there as we go along. Um, because uh, the extreme battle mode is something that again, it's going to be one of those things where you're you're, you're going to be playing a lot to get those things unlocked. Uh, so that's an important thing. But um, you know, yeah. uh, the the ports are always cool because especially if you love a game, it's really cool picking out the differences. And maybe one day we'll do like a video show. I know there's videos out there that's showing yeah. differences, but maybe we could like do additional streams with that extra content because. Well, I actually have. Um, I'm going to be putting on my channel a uh, long play of every possible. Yeah. Resident Evil complete. Two. Yeah, that's complete. something that hasn't been done. So I'm going to be do doing that. like all of the PlayStation, all of the. Pl- well, I'll I'll probably do PlayStation and DualShock. Combine it. Like combine that. I'll do the GameCube, the uh, the Dreamcast, the Nintendo sixty four A and B for both characters with a reading of the files, everything, so that people can just go and see it. Yeah, because me and John also we've done a lore discussion in the past, or not discussion, uh, which we'll lore be doing playthrough. Yeah, yeah, we've done lore playthroughs where we get every file. Be a lot of gameplay. Like there's going to be a lot of playthroughs on my channel. Yeah. Uh, people can pick and choose like what they can look at. Yeah, and we'll we'll make sure we plug your new channel at the end of this as well because yeah, sure. we're, we're we'll talk about also what we're doing up and coming as well. Yeah. Uh, for for your channel, we'll mention that at the end. We'll mention that at the end, but yeah, um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff here, and especially with the the how Resident Evil Two lives on. I think these ports are stuff that fans appreciate, and they're going to buy everything, and all the collectors are going to do their thing with it. A lot of them are expensive uh, if it's not the PS One version, even the PS One. Finding it complete, you're spending, you know, 35, 40 bucks, 45 bucks, depending on where you're looking. But I mean, fine, yeah. you know, you look at online, it's, it's again, it's because it holds us value because it's a great fucking game. And it's people, great. again, people keep it alive nowadays with like social media and YouTube and people like us who talk about it and, you know, within the community and, and making videos on it and loving it. I mean, so many people didn't even know what Nightmare Mode was. They thought it was a mod, but it was just on the 
the Dreamcast. Yeah, it was you know? just on the Dreamcast and, and, uh, and the PC. It, and it was a really cool thing. But I Nightmare mean, Mode was fun. Not, dude, that was so much yeah. fun. Definitely, we're, gonna, we're my, definitely going to do it again. My favorite stream of all time. That was just insane. That was nutty. Yeah. Uh, you we know. should start earlier next time. Yeah, it was a crazy night, but, but I, I knew it was going to be yeah. long. The only thing that really fucked us, honestly, was when we lost like an hour and a half. When I died. died. That was like, from the servers, yeah. I was like, fuck. Cause that, I, I wasn't expecting to die from one hit from him. Yeah, no, it, like, I knew that was, and that happened with me too. Like, I messed up a few times, but, you know, we did a great job and people, you know, people. I know you got so frustrated, you forgot your healing. <laughs> You're just like, I'm dead. I was like, I'm dead. Like, I'm, I'm dead. not gonna quit this. <laughs> but, uh, um, Poor Claire, she died five times that night. I know. But she could have died a lot more. Like, I did a you lot better than lab. I thought. Yeah, yeah, you died once to zombies and five times to the. Dog, boss, yeah. The G dog, yeah. So, you know, but um yeah man, Resident Evil 2 like, a little bit through everything. Resident Evil 2 Nightmare Mode is is definitive of us playing it almost like for the first time again because we had to really be careful uh yeah, because of the damage. Enemy load, and, like enemies were loading in different spots too. Yeah, it was, and they were fast. It was different. And they were like aggressive and they and kept spongy. diving at my legs. And they were spongy they and were always very dive, spongy. And they would only dive at John's legs, not mine. If they, I was they, playing they as just Claire, always dive. They're like Leon's legs, not Claire's. Um, Even with Claire they were diving at me. Did I I was just playing Resident Evil 2 the other day at Dustin's. Same thing. On the N64 GameCube I loaded up Claire or Leon B right in the beginning. It was the most crazy shit. He lost the footage because his, his hard drive got corrupted. Really? So we have to re-record it. But Did as soon everything? as it started, we lost everything yet. As soon as the game started, I turned around and shot the zombie that's behind you. And he dove at me. And he missed me, and he oh, was just laying in the well, fire. Yeah, I love when they miss. They go, ugh, and they just you, go I was fire. Well, in the in the Sega Dream, uh, the uh, the Nightmare Mode. There was a couple times where I was like shooting, and then I'd like walk back, and they dive past <laughs> yeah. me. I just hate when they dive, dude. It's they're just so annoying. That's one of the things that changed in Resident Evil One. They don't dive. Yeah, they so don't. the game kind of got a little harder. Yeah, the zombies were a little bit more challenging. They weren't doing things that you would normally expect. Uh, Lickers were hunters with long range distance because they had the jump attack. Plus, they had the, the tongue. tongue. Yeah, that can stun you, and then they would jump at you yeah. once they stun you. <gasps> yeah, if you guys missed the Nightmare uh, Mode run, it's on our, you know, the Let's Talk Resident Evil channel. Just yeah, we'll go put watch it in the that. description, we'll too. We'll put it in the description, because me and John had a lot of fun. That If you're really... That was what we did to kick off the Resident Evil 2 anniversary. We just hung out for that amount of time and it was played nine it. Hours. So if you're trying, yeah, nine hours long. So if you're trying to watch it in segments, or you're in for a treat because that's a that was again really fun stream. And actually, it wasn't too long ago. Wasn't it January 23rd? Yeah, it was like last week. Yeah, it was just very tiring. Was, I haven't done anything since. Yeah. I was like, I gotta take a break. And plus, we were busy. Nine hours. Yeah, man, that was nice. Lot, 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 a lot of content there. So it's like. 3.30 in the morning when we got time. Yeah, man. We started at 6.50. And there's 6:50. people. There are a lot of... Shout out to all the people who stayed up. They stayed with us. Stayed different with time us zones, whole, different whole countries. Thing, yeah. Just stayed with us. So we're grateful for you. Uh, but, I mean, yeah. Is there anything else you want to bring up about Resident Evil 2? Or I, I think, think we covered... pretty much covered everything. Yeah, I mean, we... Um, talk about some really files. Talk about, about differences. Uh, we didn't talk about, like, Hunk's mission or Tofu's mission. You want mission. to talk about 1.5 a little bit more? Yeah, we can talk about 1.5 a little bit more. Uh, um... I guess, like, Hunk's mission was cool. Yeah, we'll uh, talk Hunk about that, too. Hunk and yeah. Tofu were at additions to, like, the extreme battle mode. Like, that kind and of... The extreme battle mode, of course, is, is getting from point A to point B in a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of kick-started and mercenaries. Killing, yeah. So, uh, well, so that kind was of, pretty cool. Kind of started on the Sega Saturn of Resident Evil. That was the first battle mode. And yeah. then this was extreme battle mode. Or yeah. Battle mode extreme, whatever. Which is another thing. Like, that, nothing else has that either. Yeah, just that's the Sega it. Saturn Just version. the Sega Saturn, and then just Resident Evil 2. And then they changed it to that. Mercenaries. I definitely want to play that. I have well, it, man. Well, uh, Deadly Silence had a battle mode that none other, that no none other Resident Evil no. ones yeah, had. Yeah. And that's fun. Have it you ever is. played it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, the multiplayer. Fun. The yeah. multiplayer is fun. Where it would show you their highlight where plays. they are in the mansion, and Richard. you could like, yeah, you could like, run, you could run in the player models, and you see where they are in the mansion, and you see where you are, and you have to get to like each room. It's like a weird yeah. concept, but uh, they only appear as an orange, like a yeah, that's so stupid. Yeah, you don't see them, you don't see but they them. only appear as like an orange dot. Yeah, or like a green. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's cool, man. I mean, I like I like the idea that people. You know, again, like, they get to play these ports. And we'll play the Saturn. I just need a new memory card. I need a battery inside the console for the memory card. Okay. It's dead. The circle batteries. I think yeah. I have one. I just got to put one in. 
But um, that'd be something we could definitely do some footage on. Yeah, yeah, I could always bring it to Dustin's and we could record here, or record my house. We're yeah. just gonna get the converter. But uh, yeah, the one point five thing. Um, you know the builds are out now. I've played them. I've recorded footage of them as well. Very interesting. Kind of get to see some of the designs. There's no like complete dialogue work, uh, but there's different builds now that you can even buy on like Etsy and stuff in complete case, which I kind of want just for the sake of a novelty. Yeah, just for having twenty five bucks, like whatever. It's a PS one case. It's cool. Uh, and you know, they make the artwork look nice, but it's a part of Resident Evil 2 history, which is why people like talking about it. Yeah. Uh, but like we said, we I mean, I don't have anything to really say because yeah. like, it's been a long time since I played it. I just remember like, I was a walker was like on a street bike and they kept that for Claire. Yeah. Like they kept the motorcycle for yeah. her. They definitely, I think Claire's outfit's better. I think Kendo seemed to be alive and talking like around like, yeah like he station. seemed like he would be like a more major character. Yeah, more major character. Uh, Leon was still there. Um, the helipad was in the... H- helipad uh, was there. Yeah, the helipad was That was one thing there. that stayed true. Um, I remember when the first build came out, and I played it for the first time a few years ago, and uh, it was awesome uh, just to have it, because you would just burn it like you would a normal PS1 game with image burn. Um, but then you would have, you know, people saying, well, we want more complete, so there's like a, a project team that was working on that. Uh, one thing I, I hope that Resident Evil 2 does is there's a mod team that worked on 3 for the PC to give it lossless, you know, soundtrack and, uh, you know, um, mods, nightmare mode mods like Resident Evil 2, but there was never one for Resident Evil 2 on PC. No. And nobody ever went back and, and added some HD textures and different, like, you know, models for the characters and, uh, different, you know, enemy placements, which I, I wish that someone would do that. Uh, shout out to the project team who does that for Resident Evil 3. I don't think it's an open project anymore. You can still download the mods. You imagine like, putting the hunters in Resident Evil 2? Oh, yeah. yeah like, that's you just what I'm walk, saying. You they... just walk into, like, the lab, or to the city hall, and it does the cutscene where it, like, pans over the back of your character and shows you the whole hall. Yeah. And then, like, there's just hunters at the bottom of the yeah. stairs. <laughs> like, in that shotgun yeah. video, yeah. where it's just Leon looking down, and there's just endless amounts of zombies dude that's that would be that would be like someone please do that just keep re2 alive do the pc mods yo um, speaking of which resident evil 2 fact or resident evil 2 random thing when i was playing the 64 oh we lost the footage he lost everything yeah man? the g virus did something i've never seen before really yeah the dog at the end of claire a i almost got through him without getting hit because of the strategy we came up with the nightmare yeah movie, yeah where you like run you just yeah. run and then he runs and you shoot him <laughs> He, like, which they can't see me, but, like, he was here, and he ran across the floor, and I shot him, and he dodged it. He, like, jumped on the wall. He, like, juked it. No, he, like, instead of jumping up onto the thing, he went like this. He was running. He jumped on the wall like this. Like sideways? Sideways. What? And then jumped from the wall on top of me and just, ugh. Or I was Claire, so, ah! <laughs> it just hit me and then threw me on the ground. What? And I was like, what the fuck? Wow. Dude, it was crazy. He like, he jumped from stand, he was running, mid run, jumped and clanged to the wall. And Dustin's like, I've never seen him do that. Yeah. I was like, I haven't it's either. Like years later, we're still finding new things about this game. He like jumped on the wall, walked on it, and then jumped on me when I was, I was like trying to still shoot oh, him on the man. side of the wall because I had the uh, Magnum. So I was like, <sighs> And he was like invincible on yeah, the wall. Yeah. That's his bull crap. Yeah, man, there's still stuff we're figuring I out. I had the grenade launcher. Yeah, I was I was Claire. I killed him though. Yeah, he hit me once. There you go. Yeah, man, the, the games are timeless, and we still play them to this day, and just try to like find every little nook and cranny we can and difference. You know, that's the fun part about it. But uh, you know, that's it for Resident Evil Two. Yeah, I mean, we that's, get more, that's pretty much it. So we get more like actual remake news. Remake which we don't news. want to talk about remake today because it's just we're just toxic. Wait, yeah, we're just waiting. For it's just news. so toxic. Yeah, we're waiting for um, news. The anniversary passed. We did our Nightmare Mode run. That's the only thing we really did. Yeah. So we just kind of were like, no news is really going to be announced. We were saying even during the stream before it hit midnight, we're like, yeah. they're not going to announce anything. Gonna announce anything. So, but um. Uh. So thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, um, for those of you who stuck around. We have to have them leave something in the comments. Yeah, we have to they have, have to leave be, something in the comments. have to have the Warriors. Uh, something um, Resident Evil 2 related. Hey, Trenchy! Exclamation point. Game over. <laughs> and quotation mark. Game you, over. Yeah. Hey, Trenchy! Game over. Game over. Put that in the comments so we'll know that you uh, now, uh, that you watched all the way Go ahead and, and plug the new channel that we're doing. We'll talk about it real quick, about what we're trying to do now. Okay, John, so... John is making his final... Uh, 
channel. He's, yes. he's rebranded a couple times. I've rebranded a couple it. times. I found what I wanted to do. Uh, something generic. Um, it's going to be just fun, and I'm going to do reviews. It's going to be stuff. live stream and also As some want to, mostly live stream post production stuff for reviews and such. Um, it's going to be kind of like a like a like a I don't know like an on demand kind of thing where you could just go watch full playthroughs of video games. Um, or you can join me and talk to me and stuff like that. But one of the things we're going to be doing, me and uh, Anthony, is we are going to be doing what's called Survive This. Um, it's going to be a series on my channel where we give you guys stipulations uh, or we let you vote on certain things. Uh, it might be the game. It might be certain rules or whatever. But we're going to be playing through Resident Evil games um and other games too. And Not other games. Evil, uh, we'll start with like, Resident Evil because it's f- most familiar with everybody. And you guys can vote on stipulations, yeah. like you know, handguns, uh, handgun only, only uh, anything. We'll we'll post polls on Twitter. Yeah, Twitter's going to be big for this. Yeah. Actually, YouTube has a poll system now too. They do. So they we can do. we can do both, um, and kind of combine them. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is, you guys will vote on the game we play, or it'll be like a vote. You won't be able to vote like freely. Like we'll give you options. Um, and then we'll be able to figure out certain rules and stipulations on how to play it. And then we're just going to get together and live stream it. Yeah. And, uh, you guys are all going to be more than welcome to come watch, uh, laugh at us. Yeah. Struggle with us. F- for yeah. fun. We had so much fun doing, I had so much fun doing nightmare mode. It's just something that I think would be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And I agree. As soon as he told me the name and everything, I was like, let's just do that. I like that name. Yeah. Survive this. Let's Survive just like this. work on that. So we're still working out the... Yeah, like we're, the it's going to start this month. Yeah, it's going to start. There will be one in February. We're going to try um, to do one one a month and then fill yeah. it in with like the videos that you're doing. Yeah, and, and we'll explain. We're going to drop a video on my channel. I'll drop a video on my channel explaining like all the rules and stuff. And what like, we what should do is do. if you have, I don't know if you have a channel uh, already made. I but, do. Have, it channel's okay, already made. Everything's good. So already we'll made. put it in the description. So if you guys are listening to this and you want to uh, check that out, go yeah. ahead and subscribe now. There will be content. So just go ahead and subscribe. So when we start doing this series each yeah. month. You guys get to stay in tune and go get check out what John's doing. Yeah. There's a lot of people want to check out John's stuff, but his channel is always changing and it's always getting taken. It's down. It's always changing, and, yeah. getting taken down. It's it's it, it. I went through a lot to to try to figure out what I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, I also am going to have other content, not just Resident Evil. Um, I'm going to probably do reviews on games a lot. The stuff um, that you like. Yeah, the stuff yeah. I like. Uh, I'm going to be talking about you know some Final Fantasy things. Uh, I'm sure I'll be talking about some Pokemon things. Uh, we have some interesting things coming from the Legacy of Kane series. Uh, I'm going to see if about getting some Blood Omen and some Soul yeah, Reaver stuff. Yeah, big fan of stuff. that stuff too. Hell yeah. Uh, so, it's explaining, because I was looking online and there's really nobody else that really does it. No. It's so not it's as just, popular in the inter- really interwebs. Games. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of stuff over my channel. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to dive into anime or not just yet, but I might talk about anime a little bit. Um, you're just gonna but it's going to be building, series reviews. Yeah, you're yeah. just going to start building from each It's going to be series month. reviews. I'm not going to do like weekly or monthly videos um, on anime or anything like that. Like uh, one of the big ones that's going to come up is uh, Dragon Ball Super is mm-hmm. ending in March. Yeah. I'm going to have a thoughts video on that entire thing, and that will also reach that fan base. Yeah, too. as a continuation you know, of Dragon Ball Z, break like out of how the I liked bit. it, what I didn't yeah. like, what I hope's in the next one, uh, stuff like that. Uh, movie reviews will be out. I'm going to be doing movie reviews for a lot of things like uh, Final Fantasy Advent Children, Degeneration, Resident Evil, stuff like yeah. that. Um. I'm going to have you on, which is this is actually the first time you're hearing of this, but uh, me, you, and Dustin are going to be doing reviews on my channel. Not really reviews, more like open discussions. Sure. Um, on Podcast. the live actions. Yes. Yeah. One at a time. Oh, man. <laughs> one at a time. I cannot wait. We're going to watch it in order, and we're going to just refresh ourselves on it. I got the blue. Does Dustin have the Blu-rays? I have the Blu-rays. You have the Blu-rays. I have everything. We all have the, all right. Yeah, we all have awesome. the Blu-rays. Uh, we'll probably get together at like your house or something and watch it in 4K. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, watch it in 4K. <laughs> yeah. we can. I'm down. Uh, so we're definitely going to... That's going to be coming soon. So there's just a lot of really cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like this year, we're really trying to just, you know... I'm trying to get merch in order. I'm trying to... Finally you know, got full-time. Stuff. I, I'm full-time Best Buy now, so I have money coming in. Yeah. Um, I have more of a set schedule than of like a throw-around schedule. So I have time to get stuff done. Uh, as you guys heard in the beginning of the podcast, if you're still around, uh, I got the new TV. I got a Dreamcast. I, yeah. I, I got all the HDMI converters and splitters ordered. They're on their yeah, way. Yeah, me and John today, we got we set up his new surge protector for all his stuff that he's yep. plugging in. Everything's good to go, man. Everything's looking good. We're sitting uh, on the new couch we just got today. <laughs> new so, couch is yeah. uh, new couch is good. So, so we, we've... 
things are going to happen this year. I wanted it to be last year, but this year is the year. Yeah. And, it's uh, time when it's time. So yeah, this is the time. time to start grinding. And, and a shout out to up. Juan. Juan. Torres. Juan Torres. Uh, always there. Number one fan. <laughs> love you, pal. Uh, uh, love all you guys. Thank you yeah. so much for all the support. And of course, if you're listening to this, make sure that you uh, you know continue to support it. Like it. Download it on iTunes and Libsyn. Uh, I'll probably put in a little introduction uh, to this podcast as well, uh, talking about um, stuff that's also going to be on the future podcast. Uh, content kind of thing that I discussed with you. I'll put yeah. it in post for the beginning of this episode you guys are listening to. But thank you so much for listening. And thank, thank you, guys. you And thank you again, John, for coming by and doing Always. this. Always. And, uh, Part of the yeah, we'll, we'll be doing something together soon. So, uh, we'll keep you up to date with more streams. I gotta just finish Eternal Darkness and some other stuff I've been, haven't had the time to do. But now, since the RE2 stuff's over with, like, I'll focus on that and then we'll take it from there. So, I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Peace out. And don't forget, it's up to us to take out Umbrella.